this is this is actually if it were me this would be number one because I'm one of those guys where I'd like to account for as much as I can when we're talking about information security. When you're dealing with some of the big cloud providers, it's very difficult to get answers to your questions about how you're actually protecting my information. Um, in information security, we understand that we cannot stop all attacks. So we can't bring the risk down to zero. But those attacks that we cannot stop, we should be able to detect and respond to. Our customers really uh, demand that from us. Uh, in order for me to do that, I need intrusion detection. I need early alerting and monitoring. I need logs. I need, uh, I need local access to the systems in order to do some type of forensic analysis of what took place. When you go out to the cloud, you could potentially and probably will lose that ability. Okay. Um, I don't know what happens when you call Google and tell them that one of your user's accounts was compromised. Uh, I, mean, I assume that they have a process that they would follow, but I doubt you'd be able to get all the information you need in order to prosecute, potentially prosecute a crime in a, in a court of law. Right? I, I would assume. I don't know for sure. Amazon, I'm almost positive that you wouldn't get it. Amazon actually told the and that's one of the things, if your Amazon told the IRS, when the IRS sent them basically a, uh, a vendor risk management questionnaire. I don't know if you guys have ever gotten those RFPs where uh, you get a questionnaire from a customer and ask you to fill out this questionnaire and then send it back to them. If you work with big banks, you definitely have those before. Okay. No. And if you haven't gotten them yet, you, you will eventually. Uh, some of those questionnaires can be pretty lengthy. Some of them can be pretty uh, confusing, I think. Uh, so the IRS, before they were going to you know, use Amazon as, as a cloud provider, they wanted to assess the risk of doing business with Amazon. So they sent Amazon uh, a questionnaire. Amazon refused to answer their questions. I don't know about you guys, but I don't refuse kind of anything from the IRS. Uh, so that took some. That took some. Heartland, you guys heard of the Heartland breach? Heartland, 40, I don't know, 45, 50 million credit card numbers exposed. Happened just a few years ago. The largest breach to date. Uh, well, Sony might surpass that right now. Um, all right, well, if you haven't heard about this breach, this is a big breach, a big deal. I'm guessing that if you go back through your, through your mail, you'll find, if you keep those things, you'll find a breach notification from one bank or another, maybe more than one, uh, where they give you some explanation. That was probably the Heartland breach that happened in 2009. Uh, it cost uh, probably close to a billion dollars when you talk about what the banks had to do. Uh, Heartland, Heartland Payment Systems is a large payment processor, right? So they're governed by PCI DSS compliance. They were PCI DSS compliant. Trust me, they just done their audit no more than a month prior to the breach being detected. Now, the, why, the reason why this plays here is because everybody who was doing business with Heartland assumed that because Heartland was PCI DSS compliant that they had taken care of significant risks. However, once the breach took place and an investigation was completed, the breach took place through the compromise of a SQL injection attack. Now, if you know about SQL injection, that's been around since forever. Right? As part of your PCI and DSS compliance is vulnerability scanning, right? has to, which has to happen quarterly. Why, you know, as a security guy, I'm wondering why it wasn't that detected. Uh, and I would also wonder why even if your outside vendor who's doing your PCI DSS, DSS vulnerability scanning in your own vulnerability management exercises, in your own software development lifecycle for a company this size, why didn't you detect that? Okay, so that was the compromise, right? And then I, I gained a foothold into the database server. I then elevated my privileges to that of an administrator where I can install software. It's still not detectable. Right? So I install 
essentially sniffers, sniffing software on various systems within the Heartland Payment Systems network, still not detected. Now I'm capturing data and sending it out, still not detected, right? So what, what, it, what, it, came, what it came down to is Heartland was doing the minimum required in order to keep their customers and keep the auditors off the back. However, we know that there were significant, significant vulnerabilities. So just the unknown, for me, I need to have answers to these questions. 